wrong with the internet if not Hi everyone, it's Karen here. I'm so sorry. I was really trying to log in and it wouldn't allow me to do anything. I am here. Yay, I'm so excited to be part of this amazing YouTube hop that Tiffany Solorio organized. She's just amazing and has worked so hard for National Craft Month. And I am so excited to be here. I am not sure how many people already have been, but there's some people that are basically staying overnight and watching all 24 hours. So welcome to a World of Heart live stream event. I just want to tell you the next stop, I'll tell you this at the end as well, but the next stop will be Corin uh, Wiskman. And you can find a link to the description. You can find the links to everything in the description area below, it, which is uh, the link to our Facebook page. You can also find a whole list of participants that is right below, so you can hop along from one to the next. All the details are, all the sponsors, which we're so thankful for them, are all listed in that Facebook page as well. And I am just so grateful. Every single channel is giving away something, and I'm going to be giving away a $25 gift certificate to Joggles. And at the end of this video, we'll have a giveaway, so just stay tuned until then, and I'll let you know how to win. I have a little helper here with me. My husband is actually here, but he's not. He's just in the background, just going to be putting some links up because I really wanted some help. There's so many of you here, and I really want to make sure that everybody knows what's going on. So I am going to get started. And just so you know, some of the uh, prizes, there's prizes also afterwards, and those are some of them are United States only. But my prize is anybody can win from anywhere in the world. So please stay tuned until the end so you can find out how to win that. And I am just so, so excited to be here. We're so grateful. And it's been such an amazing um, almost, I don't know, 12 hours. She started 7 a.m. on Pacific Standard Time this morning. So I guess we're over 12. I'm basically the 13th hour. And I'm really excited to create this. I'm going to be creating an altered CD. Now, if you recently watched my YouTube video, um, I did another altered CD. I really thought that that idea would be really fun to do. And I was really excited to just, I was just so inspired by it that I thought I could create another one. And these are really fun because you can use them for so many different things. First of all, it's a circular of surface. So it's really fun. I love creating on circles, but also it's really nice because you can create this as an ornament. You could do this as a, um, some kind of, um, even you could even do jewelry if you really want to wear something really, really big, but I doubt anybody will want to wear such a big thing. But even just to give it as a card, I mean, you could stick it on the front of a card or you could even hang it as a wall, as an art on a wall. So I'm going to get started. I have another CD here as well. And what I wanted to show you is a couple things. I mean, many of you are familiar with the new molds from Finnabar and the other redesigned molds from... Um, from Prima. So there is a new modeling material that is out there, but truthfully, what I love using and what I find the fastest is to use amazing casting resin. So although I already have the castings ready already, so I do have this one ready already because I don't feel like waiting, I want to show you how I use the amazing casting resin. Now, all products are listed below in the description area. So you can like go ahead and Click on some of them. This one is specifically, you can buy it on Amazon, so it's really great, and it's such a quick one to use. But I do want to make sure to say, to mention, that you should wear gloves when you're using the casting resin. Um, it gets really, really sticky on your fingers. More than sticky, it's really not healthy for your for it touching your skin. I mean, it is a chemical reaction. It gets pretty, pretty hot. So I'm just going to show you how to do these castings, but as I said, they're already done for you. I have three cups. One of them will have the mixture and the other two will have equal parts of, of the two products. And this is how they come. They come in this box. Oops, sorry, one second. I'm gonna show you here. They come in this box and this is called Amazing Custom Resin and it comes with two bottles. One of them has like a yellowish liquid and I'm gonna put a little bit of it in one of the cups. And I don't really measure, you could measure if you want to, 
but you don't really need to measure them. You just have to make sure that you kind of put equal amounts. I mean, eyeball it. So I put equal amounts of both. I mean, trust me that it is equal because it's hard to see when it's a vertical position on the camera. And then all I do is I go ahead and mix the two of them together. So there we go. Is there an order? Um, somebody's asking if it smells. So um, no, it actually that has no smell. It doesn't smell at all, which is really, really nice because I'm very sensitive to odors. So it doesn't smell at all, which is really, really nice. I'm gonna get a stick and all I do is just mix it until it's clear. And sorry, I was supposed to put my phone with all the little questions. Okay, so now all I do is just pour it inside and it takes about 10 minutes for it to cure. So I just pour it inside and I usually keep use the stick. Sometimes the little edges are don't get fully covered. So now they did. I'm gonna make the I have enough to make the flower in the middle here as well. And I'm gonna make these as well. I mean, what I do is I every time I create custom resin, every time I create molds, I end up making a few more just because I keep them in a bag or in some box. So every time I need a piece, I have them already ready. And I see I still have a lot ready, so I'm gonna grab some more. So the, for example, this moon over here, and I'm gonna create just a little, this moon, even this, though I already have one. I'm gonna, uh, this one is not a new mold, this one is. This is a new, actually it is a redesign with Prima new mold. It's called Harrington, I think. It's listed below in the description area. And here right now I just spilled on this one. So I'm going to kind of push it like this way. The new mold, which is the one with the moons, that one is definitely a new one from Finnabar. And it's right here. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna let them dry. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna show you how to remove them from the from this right after when once it's all fully dry. Hold on, it's kind of, okay, now I see I spilled everywhere because I usually don't move them, but because I want to, because it's a live show, I need to move them from here. So I'm going to move this and I'm going to also turn my phone into, so I know what is going on. I can read the chat as well. Okay, hold on. I use QuickBooks Oof. self to maximize Sorry. my tax deductions. Sorry about that. Okay, there we go. So now I can actually read the chat at the same time. And there we go. So I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to start working on this. So I do have this already. I already made one like this. And I also have the moon. So I kind of designed it the way I like it. So I just pick the different stars and things like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna paint everything in advance. But the first thing I did, and I used this really fun, really fun uh, stencil from Joggles. It's called Bursts. And it's really fun to create texture with it. I really love it. So that's also listed below. And all I did is use modeling paste to, to create the texture. So I take them, you take some modeling paste. This is the uh, Art Basics modeling paste from Prima. Oops, there it goes, it is. There goes the lid. Okay, so I kind of center this and create a texture on the CD. So there we go. I, I love this tool that I'm using, this silicone brush. It's the best tool to create really smooth texture with a stencil. Somebody was showing a different one that just came out from Nouveau, I think, but this is still my favorite. I mean, I don't have the other one, but I love the size of the one inch silicone brush. And of course I always list it in every single video because I think it's like a staple in my mixed media, in my mixed media. So there you go. I created the texture here and I'm gonna let this dry. I'm just gonna clean the edges a little bit. So this is an old CD that I had lying around. 
So it's perfect because you know what? You don't really know what to do. There's so many things that that you can use in your house and you don't even know that you could use them as surfaces. Now it's really important to always clean your stencil. And this is what I'm doing. Get rid of all the gunky stuff that is, accumulates on top of it. Now while this is drying, I want to paint my, uh, my molds. And I want to do them in black. That will save me a lot of time. What was, what was the staple in your mixed media? What type, what product? Okay, so is the, what product you is my, something was a oh, the silicone brush, sorry. This is my staple, my mixed media, the silicone brush. You can see how overly used it is. Every time I go to some of my classes teaching, especially in a, a class that I teach somewhere around here, I have the owner of the store, she always cleans it for me. Because you can see I can probably remove all the gunky stuff out of it. But I use it so often, every single day, that I end up, um, I end up with so much material on it. So you could really take this off. I could really clean it off, but I just choose not to because I just use it over and over again. So you see, it's really, really a great, a great tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some black gesso to just paint my pieces. I want to have them ready. So when I glue them onto the background, they are already ready to go. So I have the stars and this iron framework. It's called... Harrington or Barrington, something like that. And let me get a paintbrush. Who makes the silicone brush? Oh, sorry. So the silicone brush is made by Prima Marketing. Finnabar is it's her brand. It's a mixed media brand from Prima Marketing. So the same ones that make the molds, the same ones that make the black gesso that I'm using right now. The only thing they don't make is that amazing cast in resin. They do have a different product, which is like a model modeling clay, but I find it hard to use. I mean, I love it. It's actually one of the best ones on the market right now, but I have a hard time pressing with my fingers because I have arthritis. So it's really hard for me to press with that. So I really need something that will not uh, be hard for me. So if you do have issues like uh, fibromyalgia or, or arthritis or anything like that, then choose something like Amazing Custom Resin to use your in mold. The other thing you can use, and I have a video on my YouTube channel uh, where I show different ways that you can use, different things that you can use inside molds. So for example, like even like a glue gun, you can use the glue from a glue gun as well. And this is an opportunity for you to say to please uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I mean, you don't have to, but I really appreciate it. And I love to hear your comments that you make. And it was really informative. I have a lot of different videos where I explain different things. So it's really, um, I, it's just a good way to communicate with me. And if you press the little bell at the bottom of the screen, you will be able to be notified every time I have a new video or a new live stream coming up. So it's really important to do that for every channel. Now, I'm really excited for this stream itself. It's just really, really amazing to have so many people from all around the world. So if you're excited, as just as excited as I am, you should be because it just goes on and on and on for another 12 hours. So it's really exciting. Okay, so you see how quickly it is to just paint these and they dry pretty quick as well. So I'm just painting this in black because I want to use the waxes on top of it. And the waxes that I'm going to be using are also part of the same company. I do, I am an educator for them and I'm also on their design team for Prima Marketing. So I do use a lot of their products as well. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to let this dry. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat set this so it will be quicker including the disc, which I do have to paint in black as well. So I want the modeling paste to be dried as well. That way I can add the black onto this also. Um, the other thing is while I like the surface of the disc, although it's metal, funny enough that when you heat it up, it doesn't warp. A lot of things tend to warp up, except fully, especially if it's like plastic or paper. But this actually is really nice because no matter how much I put heat to it, it didn't like warp it up or melt it or anything like that. So they're made really, really well. Um, let's see if there's any questions. Please like just 
really important to say thank you to Tiffany Solorio for organizing all this. It's so much work to organize these type of hops. And she's just really amazing. She's one of my really good friends. And we just chat a lot and we have so much like love for uh, like the the crafting community and the artists and all the artists that are in it. So please support one another. It's really, really important that you support one another. As you can see, I don't know if you can see here on the side, just want to show you, it's already curing. You see the white part here? It's curing already, but it's not dry yet. Okay, so now this is dry. The modeling paste is dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just make, just paint the disc on the back as well. I want to make sure that everything is covered with black. Now you can also cover the back, but you might have to do that on a, once everything is dry, once you've finished all the stuff on the front, because otherwise, otherwise it becomes really, really difficult to, I mean, to not keep it all messy. Thank you, Tiffany, you're so sweet. Um, so if you get inspired by this, by my project, and or by the, this one or the one that I created last week, and you create something on a disc, even if it's your own style or something similar to me, even if you copy exactly, please tag me on social media. This is my Instagram, at Tamir. Oops, it looks like it's upside down, but I don't think it is. Um, at Tamir. so please tag me. And, or if you tag me on Facebook or anything, or leave me a comment. Or even send, if you don't want to show it in public, you can always send it to me in an email. I would love to see what you create. I'm really, really happy when I inspire somebody. But I'm also happy to see what other people create, what ideas. Some people come up with such good ideas that I never think of. Like this morning when Aaron reused the Jenga blocks. I don't know if you guys saw that. I was like, oh, why didn't I think of that? I sometimes think so many times. I saw somebody a long time ago create something with a old Ferro Rocher box, and I thought, oh, why didn't I think of that? So there's so many ideas out there, and it's hard for us to come up with some new ideas, but we try really hard. Okay, so let me just dry this as well. And once it's dry, I can start gluing everything. So are there any questions in the meantime while I'm drying? do i see or do i use white or black gesso most often so truthfully that's a loaded question trudy because i actually use both almost half and half truthfully and there's also clear gesso so don't forget about that one i use a lot of black gesso when i want to use metallic paints and if you go to my YouTube channel, you will actually see a video that is basically specifically all about gesso. It is specific, it explains every single thing, like why to use black gesso, why to use white gesso, like the reasons why behind each one, what type of gessos they are and so forth. So it's really hard to like explain which one I use most. I actually use them pretty equally. So I wouldn't say I use one more than the other. It depends on what. So that's why I mean, if I want to create something more metallic, then I use the black gesso. But if I want to create something a little bit more um, with like watercolors or with sprays, then I use white gesso. So there's so many different things. You're asking where I draw inspiration. Somebody's asking where I draw inspiration. Truthfully, I draw inspiration from everywhere. My husband actually gives me a lot of ideas. I do have to say so. Um, sometimes just ask somebody around you. They sometimes come up with ideas that you don't even think about. And I draw inspiration from nature. I draw inspiration from basically my head, my dreams sometimes. Sometimes I lay at night and I actually think of ideas while I'm lying down. And truthfully, I draw inspiration from other people. I saw somebody using, I think it was Natalie, one of the, my teammates. She was using uh, puzzles to create this canvas. And I thought, oh, I could do that. And why didn't I think of that? So I went and did that and I gave her credit. And I said, you know what? You inspired me so much to use the puzzles. And this was like, a, I don't know, a, about a year ago or so that she did it and I created a, another canvas with that. So other people, there are so many people that are inspiring and can give you lots of ideas and it's okay to, to copy them and to do something similar to them. It's not a big deal to copy as long as you give them credit. Now, some people don't like that, but I'm okay with that. If you want to 
copy something I did. I mean, I would love for you to just say, look, you inspire me and I really love it. But if you don't, I mean, that's up to you, right? I can't force somebody to do that, but it is much better when you do because it makes somebody feel good. Um, sorry, I wanted to explain that I'm using 3D matte gel and I'm using this one just because it's matte and it dries uh, matte, so it's not shiny. You see how there's like little uh, gaps of glue here on the side? I don't like it if it's if it's a glossy gel. What happens is that you will see glossy material around it. So I don't like that. So I always use the matte. Now yeah, I could. Tracy's asking, do you cure everything before wax, or do you wax pieces and then add it to the? Okay, so okay, so that's a, so Trudy is asking if you if I stick everything before I wax or I put the wax before I, I stick everything. So usually when I'm working by myself, I prefer sticking everything, painting everything, and then adding the waxes. However, even here I'm doing that as well. The only step that I actually did in advance is I actually did the um, the black gesso. But truthfully, when I actually do it not on a live show, which is much easier because I can take my time. I wait till this dries and then I go to the next step and I paint and I use the gesso and so forth. So there is really no rule for that. You could do either one. The only thing with sticking everything in advance before you paint them with the gesso is that it's going to be hard to sometimes get in between the embellishments. And if you're doing it with the waxes, the only reason why I don't recommend that is because you're not going to get an even coat on everything. It's better to have everything stuck on before and, and then do the and then do the wax at the end. And I'll show somebody has a question. Hold on. Yeah. Oh sorry. And then do the, the everything. What's the other question? Sorry. Christy. And Christy. I got yeah, I see that. So, so it's the Christy's asking. I got clear gesso instead of white. Can I add acrylics to it to change it to white? Um, no, but it doesn't really matter that the clear gesso can work just the same as white gesso. I mean, obviously it depends on what you're using it for, but if you want to give a coat of um, clear, what you can do is paint the background in white with acrylic paint and then put acrylic gesso on top just to get that tooth and that grit to it. Um, I don't think you can, you can maybe put white acrylic paint, but I think it's going to kind of dilute it. It depends on which one. So you could mix, I guess you could mix like something like a heavy body. Sorry, I have a dog. I guess you can mix the heavy body acrylic paint. I guess you could. I don't know. I've, I've never had to do that, but you could mix heavy body acrylic paint. Heavy body acrylic paint with the gesso. It should work fine. And I apologize for my dog. Somehow every single time I have a live show, he decides that he's going to bark. So sorry about that. So there is different different ways of uh, using gesso. And I really recommend you going and watching that video on all about gesso on my YouTube channel. It really explains a lot of things, when to use what. I do like having all of them. I look. I like having clear gesso, and I like having. I like. I like having the regular gesso, and so forth. Okay, sorry, I'm not paying attention because I'm trying to answer all the questions, and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Hold on. So I am just designing it here. I'm not really sure if I did this correctly. I think I want to start over here. And should I put another one? Uh, well, let me see. Oh, I did one, two. Oh, I guess I didn't do. Oh, there's another small one. Okay, that's why I was confused. Okay, so sorry. Um, what, am using on the backs? what am I using on the backs? Oh, do you mean like what am I what am I using to glue? Um, I I think that's what the question you mean. I am using uh, a, this this 3D matte gel. It's a heavy gel. Another video that I have on my channel. It's all about gels, which is all, a really nice. Um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll address that in a second. So, so I really like um, using this one because it holds things and it takes 24 hours to dry. Now, my friend Chris is saying that she uses hot silicone, uh, like a glue gun, to glue things. The only reason, Chris, that I don't like using that is that he, like a glue gun, the glue from the glue gun does not last forever. If you have crafting projects from 10 years ago, you will know that it does not last forever. It actually comes off, things come off. This gel medium will last forever. 
It will last forever. It will never come off. So as long as you glued it really well, it shouldn't come off. Now, the one thing that I do is that I try to clean up all the goop around the edges. And that helps to take off the little white, I mean, the little lumpy areas around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it another coat of the black gesso. This is what I meant by even if you don't get it all covered, you can always add another coat or you can just glue everything first and then add the black gesso. It's not a problem either way. I do not recommend to use hot silicone uh, glue gun. If you're going to use a glue gun, then use it, but also use the gel medium with it as well so it stays permanently. The glue gun, and the glue from the glue gun, another thing that it does is that when you heat it up again, it starts melting again. And then you end up with some pieces coming off because the glue kind of heat sets, heats again. So you have to like really be careful with the glue gun. Okay, now I'm going to just quickly go over this. I'm trying to rush as much as I can because I want to make sure that I don't go over the hour. So I'm just painting this everything again, and then I'm going to dry. Now, what I like about these products, if you give them a really light coat, they dry pretty quickly, which is nice, because for mixed media, that's very, very annoying otherwise to have to wait until everything dries. So I'm just going to finish that here. And the gel medium takes about 24 hours to fully set, just so you know that. And yeah, that's basically what it is. I think it needs a little bit more here. I don't think I have enough. Okay, so now I'm going to heat, well, I'm just going to show you actually, well, this is drying a little bit. I want to show you now, this should be fully dry. So here is this, I mean, it leaked a little bit because I was in a rush, but I want to show you how easily it comes off, okay? So, oh no, it's not dry yet. Sorry, I thought it was dry. No, it's not dry yet. I have to wait a little bit longer. I thought it was. The, this one looked like it was dry. Well, there, this one is dry, okay? So, again, it leaked a little bit, which is unfortunate. I don't know why, because I was in a rush. So, I want to see. Uh, okay, so here, you see how it came off? So, all I do is I can take scissors and just cut around it, okay? And just cut around the edges of the of what I did. Now my hands are super filthy from, from the black gesso, so it doesn't help at all when this is happening. But just to show you how quick this creates a beautiful, beautiful, perfect design. So I really, that's why I love using that. Okay. Let's continue on. So let's heat set this a little bit more again. And now I can watch the chat. Yes, please, Cheryl, if you make something with a CD, I know everybody has old CDs at home. Please tag me and share it. I would love to see what you create. Um, yeah, it was a little bit soft. It still didn't harden. I don't think it's been full 10 minutes since I created it. Or maybe it was but it's really hot around here and I've been heating it, I've been heat setting it. So the silicone didn't dry properly yet, but it does harden after a while. You're right, this one looks really soft. I don't know why it hasn't hardened. Um, oh, sorry, okay. Hi, Pam. Um, yeah, what did I use to do? I, I used amazing casting resin to create it. For those of you who are just joining in, I use this to create the castings. And I showed it at the beginning. I mean, you can watch this afterwards if you want. Um, but... Um, when do you ask if you can use art resin? What, sorry? You can use art resin. You can, you, uh, you, can, you can use art resin. I'm not sure what art resin is, actually. I, any type of resin will work. I mean, if you know how to use resin, then any type of resin will work. Any type of clay, any type of resin. I mean, even glue works inside of it. So, truthfully, any type of thing works. So, yeah, I think this is what art resin, I think this is what it is. This is the same idea. I think art resin is the same thing. Um, 
Yes. So definitely somebody's saying that you can save lids. Oh, I do this all the time. All the lids to all my containers. I um, definitely use all of them to create ornaments. So yes, I use them to, to fill up things. So for example, I, what I do is I can use this to raise something on a project. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Okay, now to the fun part, okay? This is very hot right now. I love using these waxes. These are the three of the brand new colors that Prima Finabar just came in. They're called Art Alchemy. And there's three colors that are my favorite. The Peacock, the Mint Sparkle, and the Firebird. Now the Firebird will be the third color that I use. And I'm going to actually um, use these two to paint the background. So, I am going to see, I mean, I'm going to use this. Now, for this, I'm going to use some stipple brushes. There are other, there's other names for them. There's stipple brushes, and there's also, um, I don't know, blending brushes. So, you can name them anything you want. And what I do, oh, and then one of the tricks that I found really, really helpful is to heat up the wax. So, I like heating this up because it really helps with um it melts it a little bit and it, it's much easier to apply that way so then what i do is i just go inside and i start adding it to places so now this is a gorgeous color it has both a turquoise like an aqua color which is my favorite and also a golden color almost like brass so it's stunning it's a perfect um, oxide, like for like a patina oxide. And look at this color. I mean, the two of them together just make my heart sing. Isn't it stunning? Oh my God, this, these colors are just beyond anything I've ever seen. And I've, I know I've already used them before in different projects, but I can't help myself. I want to use them over and over and over again. What is the name of the teal? Oh, the teal, this one is called Peacock, and this one is called Mint Sparkle. So these are the two. Now, the nice thing, or the good thing about these, they're called interference paints or waxes in that manner. And what's cool about them is that they react differently, and they're different colors depending on what you use them on. So let me just show you. I made this video on my channel. And there's a few more colors than that. So you see this one that that is the mint sparkle. I think this is the one, but I could be wrong. When I split it in half and I put black on one side and white on the other, and what happened is that it shows different colors. It interferes differently with the white and with the black. So you get two different colors interfere. Go watch that video. It's all about these waxes and how they work on the background because I don't have time in this hour to basically show you everything. It's really hard. I'm trying to reach the other examples. Oh, here's the other one. This is the one. This is another one. So you see there's two colors for every single one. But go watch that video because I just don't have time to show you that now. But I love interference paints. Finabar uses a lot of interference paints in her work and in, I mean, her products because they look so good. She, they, she calls them, some of the paints are called Opal Magics and she also has them now in waxes and they're just gorgeous. Now things are still a little bit loose and that's okay. Now when this because I like the opal magic waxes. Yeah, so they're okay. So the difference between and I haven't figured out she just called the opal magic waxes, which is what I just mentioned. The difference with the opal magic is that when opal magic is on white, it looks kind of like an opal color, like very light, kind of shiny beige. Okay. These ones, when they are on white, they look like the true color that you see here, that they will be this color that you see. So for example, on white, this will look like a mint color. And on, on the white, I think this will look also like that or a bluish color. So the difference is the Opal Magics, when they're on white, they show very, very light. And when they're on black, they show the true bright color. 
These ones show two bright colors, no matter whether you're in black or in white. They're just two different colors than the original ones. So you end up with two different bright colors, which I love because I love using bright colors. Um, I don't use a lot of very light colors. I don't like that. It's just the way I create is like that. So that's why. Now for the Firebird is this one. So this is how it looks on white. And this is how it looks on black. So it looks kind of more coppery on black and a little bit more orangey on white. So it's just really, really cool. And what I'm going to do use this one for is to use with highlights. Now, this is my favorite one now to use for highlights. However, before this one, I used to love the vintage gold and I used to use it everywhere to for with highlights. Now for this one, I'm not gonna use the paintbrush. You could, but the reason why I'm using my finger is because I only want it to kind of touch the top of the texture everywhere. I don't want it to touch everything because what happens if it does, the blue behind will just get covered. So you want to make sure that you're only covering, you're only touching the top and I can control it better when I'm using it with my finger. So it's a really much easier way to control and you get that same effect. So I really love this color. It just gives it such a beautiful effect. Okay, let's see. And another thing about these waxes is that they're permanent and you don't have to seal them. They're, they seal automatically. I will use though this just for the edges here. This one is still wet. So I will use this just to create the edges on the on the side. And the other thing I want to use it is I want to kind of use a little bit inside to create the lines here. So it's hard to get into smaller area. Um, these are called stipple brushes or um, somebody's asking what these are called. They're called uh, stipple brushes or uh, stencil brushes. They have different names. So it's hard to like say the ones blending brushes, every company calls them something else. Oh, take the dry. Um, no, the wax is dry. There's nothing to dry with the wax. The wax is like basically you, you just leave it for a few seconds and it's completely dry. The wax doesn't feel wet. And the nice thing about it, it's also uh, smells really, really good. You'll be impressed with how good this smells. I really love um, the way it smells which is not usually the case with a lot of products. Uh, okay, another thing I added is these. These are mechanical antique labels. I already used two of them. One of them is on this one here. It says your story matters. And the other two, this one says find yourself or art is the answer. So um, I don't know what the waxes are made of. I do not know the formula. Somebody's asking what they're made out of and I don't know the formula. I'm sorry, that's something that I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this one here as well, just so I can get to let that dry. Uh, the wax is not movable, it's permanent. So you cannot, you move it, uh, sorry. You can, if you put it on, you can remove it right away quickly. Somebody's asking like how quick, I think how long you have until it's, until then you can move the wax, but you, you don't have a choice. You have to kind of like, if, if you put it on, the only other way to cover it is with another, another waxy color. You could put another color on top, but you can't really remove it that well because it's pretty permanent. But what you can do is that if let's say you make a mistake, you could paint the whole thing black again and start all over. That's the nice thing about mixed media. Nothing is ever like, you know, nothing ever goes to waste. Now, another thing is that I'm, you can add it to metals. You see, so this one, this metal is already prepped. I never added any wax to it and you can just add a little bit to it. And the other thing you can do is you can add it to, like let's say you don't like the colors of these pearls. And I wanted to add these pearls over here to kind of create that little dot and they're red. That's the only one color I could find. So what I did is I glued them and then I took a little bit of the wax and you can change the color. So it can go on any type of surface and it's permanent. And that way you have it all ready to go. The last thing I did, and I hope I'm not missing another um, question there, is just I'm trying to be fast because I don't want, oh, I still have 20 minutes, so I guess I can slow down a little bit because there's not much to do yet. The next step and the last one is to add these little beads 
I really loved adding those little beads everywhere. And I'll show you a trick on how to add them so they don't go everywhere. One of the things why people don't like using beads, micro beads, or even glitter is because it basically goes everywhere. But there's a trick that you can do for it to work well. So you could take the gel medium. So this is the same gel medium that I used before. You could take either this gel medium here, the 3D gel, or you could take a soft gel as well. Either one would work. And what I do, and let me just show you. Let me just get a paintbrush. Um, the brand of the waxes is Prima, uh, Prima Marketing or Finabar. And they're... Sorry, yeah, let me just try to show you. There it is. I don't know if it's being it's hard to see. But um, all the products are listed below in the description area, okay? So you can just uh, go ahead and just do that. Now, I want to show you what you can do with this. And soon I'm going to have the giveaway. So for those of you who are still here, and the way the giveaway is going to work is I already uh, picked a number between... Uh, I'll tell you the brand. I'll I'll, I picked a number, and all you're going to have to do is you're going to have to guess what number it is. But don't start guessing yet because um, I want to make sure that you pay attention to what's going on, and we're going to guess it very soon. The first person that guesses the number gets to win the $25 gift card to Joggles. And then at Joggles, you can buy these waxes. You can buy all these products that you see me using here today. Okay, so what I did is I took a little bit of the gel, and then I added water to it because I really wanted to dilute it a little bit. I wanted to make it soft. Because the gel is water soluble, and all these products are actually are water not water soluble, but they're like um, they're like basically except for the waxes, everything is acrylic based, so you can use it with water. So what I want to do is that I take first a microbeads, for example. No, we're not guessing yet, Joey. Not guessing yet. Don't start guessing. Um. Um. Just know that all the products are below. We're not start guessing the numbers. I haven't told you the range yet, so don't start guessing the numbers yet. Um, okay, so what I do is I take the paintbrush and I put a little bit of the glue on top, and then I stick it inside my my micro beads. And you see how it takes it all. And then what I do is I start adding it wherever I want. And what happens is that the micro beads kind of get stuck there in the place where I want them to go. So, hold on, and it, hel it helps because once it dries, it dries clear. This is a gel medium that you don't see. It doesn't dry shiny, but this is why I like using the matte colors. So I add it wherever I want, and that helps with creating texture. Now you can also go into the regular beads. One of them is, this is the copper beads, and these are called butter beads. I mean, the color looks like butter. So I, what I do is I add it in certain areas, and that, once it dries, it will look like this. So you see here how you see the beads everywhere? You will not see the gel anywhere. So that's what I like about this. Okay, so I go, you can also add it in advance. And that's easy enough to do. And so I like sticking it inside. And, you know, it doesn't even, because because the it sticks to the glue, it kind of covers everything. So the glue never goes inside the pot. It's really a good trick. I've used this trick with many different types of, um, how do you call this, with different types of beads. Could be the different micro beads, different uh, glitter. You could use this trick with glitter. So let's say you don't want to get the glitter all over. You just go and you stick your, um, you could use actually glue. You can dilute glue as well, but I like gel medium. It's just much easier to use. So it's a really neat trick that way. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to add a little bit more. And then basically then that's what, that's basically will what's be like. Trick? Somebody asked what the trick is. Uh, oh, what's the trick? The trick is to have the glue, somebody's asking what the trick is. So the trick is to have a diluted gel medium or a diluted glue with some water. And then all you do is you stick it inside the pot and that way the glue mixes directly with the, with the beads. And then you just basically almost like paint them on and they stay on because 
they stick to wherever you put them. So it's a really neat trick if you want to use with glitter or with anything small like this that you don't want it to go everywhere. I mean, some of it will still go places, but most of it will stay on your work, on your art area. I mean, most of it will stay on your background, which is nice. <clears throat> Um, okay, so now that I'm basically almost done, I'm going to tell you the rules of the gift. So you're going to be winning a $25 gift card to Joggles, and all you have to do is the first person that guesses the number between 1 and 40 will get the things. Now, you can guess as many times as you want, then start guessing, but, um, once my husband is going to be looking, the first person that guesses that, yeah, oh, show. So some people are not showing the numbers. Sorry about that. You have to show. Yeah. Okay. So, oops. Show. So some, oh gosh, I'm I'm just trying to help people. No, I don't see it yet. Okay. There we go. No. I found it. I found it. You found it? Okay. okay. So good. Yeah. We saw the winner. So put the winner now. Okay. Put the name of the person and please that person just email me. My husband's going to put the name of the email. I mean the email, the name of the person that won. Um, I can't see it, but hopefully it's the first person. If you, we, we agreed on the number in advance. And hold on. Sorry, some people are like not showing the numbers. Hopefully, you didn't press press all the shows first, okay? Because some of it is being like I'm announcing the winner, but I'll oh, okay. Just go check to make sure. <laughs> Susan Clark. Susan. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so you are the winner. So please email me. It's Karen Tamir at Simpatico. Now, if you like my video, okay, if there's inspired in any way, please give it a thumbs up. Like it, please. And if you would love to subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. It's so much fun. If you have any questions, we still have, oh, we have still have time, so we can have a little bit of chit-chat. Now, for those of you who are watching the video afterwards, there's still lots of giveaways um, that we're doing outside of the each giveaway for those who like who didn't come to the show. There is other ways to participate. You can enter other giveaways that are after the show. And those who came to the show still have the opportunity to participate in those as well. So let me just show you both of these. They're a little bit different. You know what? I am actually being, I'm trying to think. Okay, I was I was debating or not. But you know what? I'm actually being a little bit generous. <laughs> and I'm thinking that I'm going to be giving one of these away. Let's do this again. I'm going to wait. Let me think of the thing. Um, ask, do we have a trivia question? We can ask them something that you know. Okay, no. Like, Tiffany, you have a trivia question. You can ask the first person who answers a trivia question can win uh, one of these discs. You can pick either your story matters or art is the answer. Once it's dry, you can pick either, pick either the one of those. So um, the number was 36. Sorry for those of you who didn't know, the number was 36. Now, maybe uh, Tiffany has another question. So I thought to just give one of these. I think it would be nice for you to do. If you don't have a trivia question, um, let's see. Uh, I'm waiting for, about, for her to. How about, oh, how about I just pick a number? Oh, well, you want to pick a number? Okay, my husband's going to pick a number from Wait, one number. I'll, I'll uh, but make sure that all of them show. Okay, never mind. So never mind about the trivia. There's no trivia. Where's, oh, there are trivia. She okay. not Tiffany just said. Where is the smallest bone in the body? Oh, that's perfect. Okay, understand. my husband's a chiropractor, so he knows exactly where the smallest bone in the body is. Okay, the tool girl one, tool girl forty two one. Oh, tool girl, did she? Oh, she okay. was the first one to say ear. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, and she, it, yeah. Okay, tool girl, you won that. Awesome. Okay, so. Please message me with your, uh, oh, you guys are so cute. The knee, the ear, yeah, okay. nose, no, yeah, okay, perfect. So, um, so perfect. So, please message me, both of you. One of you will win, uh, one, uh, one of you won the $25 gift card, and the other one won this. So, that's exciting because I have two of these. I don't need really two of these. One will, and you can pick which one you want, just let me know. Um, I want to, I guess, you know what, it doesn't really matter. I don't mind if you finish a little bit early, unless you have any questions, guys. Uh, the next person is Corin Wispin. Uh, my husband's going to put the link right afterwards uh, for Corin for you guys to follow. I mean, it's also below in the description area, so you can just check that That's as awesome. well. Yep. Um, and thank you, thank you, Trudy, for subscribing. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming and for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate it. And oh, 
what kind of gel do I look for? Okay, so uh, the, the one you want is this one. It can also be this one. But I would really recommend that you to actually go look. It's just put in my name and put gel medium, and you will find the videos about all about gel medium, all about it's called all about gel medium, all about gesso, all about sprays. I literally have all about acrylic paints. I literally have a, a, a video about every single one of the mixed media products so people can actually not get confused. I have all about modeling paste. I have all about texture paste. I mean, the list goes on and on. So just go ahead and check all those out. And it really helps because then it will let you know, you kind of will get the idea of which gel would be the perfect one to use. But this one is the one that's listed below in the description area. So you can go ahead and um, just check. If you want to buy just this one, then go press it in my link and just get that one. But if you want to kind of know which ones, there is different types of gels that will help you for different things. There's so many different types, but this is the one I use today. Okay. So, um, thank you so much everyone for coming and now just, you can hop along. I know we're a few minutes early, but it doesn't matter. You can be waiting for her over there and thank you. Oh, thank you so, so much and have an amazing day. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm gonna end the stream now. Okay, bye everyone, sorry about that. I guess we have a few minutes. For the people who don't know about the model. Okay, end stream, excellent, we finished.